We had those black women as well. Unrealistic expectations uh, 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 of men. What's good, everybody? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of Fair Use. And today, my boy George Macon gives a response to women that are hating on the passing of our brother Kevin Samuels. And I wanted to kind of review the video to kind of talk about is Kevin Samuels to blame for the toxic divide in the black community? Well, let's get into the reaction. Peace, family. I want to talk about this um, female toxic femininity that's going on within the black community and the small section or small pocket of our community of sisters, because this don't represent all of our sisters. There's a lot of great, strong, decent black women in the, in the black community. I'm married to one for 18 years. There's a lot of good sisters, man. But there's a lot of other sisters out here that the same way we talk about black men all day, not taking care of their kids, selling drugs, murdering in the community, uh, uh, um, just doing all kinds of wicked, vile, vicious stuff. You got black women that do the same thing. You got black Stop the show. One thing I want to be uh, very adamant about is not tearing down all our people. I try to, you know, give credit to the good black women out there that are supporting black men, even if you have a disagreeing uh, opinion that we do have black women in our community that are doing nice things and great things. And you do have great black men that are doing great things. But understand that people typically only want to vilify black men who do bad things, as if we don't have black women who do bad things too. Let's continue. You got black women that don't want to be accountable for nothing. You mm. got black women that don't take care of their, their self, their health, um, um, they having babies by all kinds of men. They turning up. They getting all these BBLs and doing all kinds of stuff to their bodies, and they, nobody can tell them nothing, right? We had those black women as well. Unrealistic expectations uh, 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 of men and everything. Guess what? There's a large percentage of black women in our community that are tired of them. The same way I'm tired of the real nigga, and I just want some decent black men to be in their families and raise their children. You have decent black women that's tired of the bad. <laughs> That's tired of the unaccountable black woman. That's tired of it. And what I've noticed was when Kevin Samuels began um, to make his ascension and call out these women, and these women were calling up, I start seeing these women, these same women that say Kevin Samuels was toxic, these same women that said Kevin Samuels was divisive or dividing the black community, which the black community been divided way before you had a Kevin Samuels, right? So I don't know why they would say that. But these same women... They turned around and started to attack black women that, that actually agreed with Kevin Samuels. Facts. Let's continue. These women just started being viciously attacked for nothing. They were called pick me's, mammies, male worshipers, um, uh, insecure, uh, 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 low self-esteem, all kinds of names by these, by these other black women just for agreeing with a man or uh, uh, talking points. Mm -hmm. Now, for a long time in the black community, um, our women can say, "Hey, I, I want a guy. He has to have a ten inch pe a ten inch penis. He has to be six two. He has to have a lot of money, a car, a big house. He has to have all these different things, right?" But the minute a man say, "Hey," I don't like a woman that's plus size. Or I don't like a woman that wears hair weaves. He gets destroyed. But you just turn around and said a man has to make six figures. He has to be 6'2". He has to have a this much penis. He has to have all these things. So that just throws out the majority of men, right? So you just overlook and shit it on a bunch of men. But it's okay for you to do that, right? That's why there's the black manosphere communities. And you guys call that toxic masculinity. See, that's what Kevin Samuels was pointing out. What was he pointing out? That you want something that you are not. But if we say something about what you are not, and that's, I'm talking about the guys who were, you know, at the, 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 the financial level or the attractiveness level that these black women want. When those guys say that, they're vilified. And all of a sudden, they need to be canceled. Well, do you need to be canceled when that song, I Don't Want No Scrubs? Okay. You know, you won't make enough money for me. You hella ugly, you corny, you boring. Black men take that on the chin all of the time. And let's just be fair, Kevin Samuels was six foot five. A lot of women found him attractive. So he wasn't even the average guy. 
that people was talking about. But he understood coming up, growing up, oh, you too broke, oh, you don't have it. We all have heard that. So why is it a problem? And I'm glad he pointed out that these problems have pre-existed long before Kevin Samuels blew up in 2020. Let's go. This is the thing. This is the thing. Kevin Samuels show, right? For a lot of you men that got opinions that, that didn't, for ones that you, the ones that said that they didn't watch Kevin, that didn't watch Kevin. I'm not speaking to the ones that watched him, that may have criticism. I'm not talking to you. But those of you guys out there that, that claim you didn't watch Kevin, but you got a lot of opinion, right? Kevin Samuel's show was based off of the high value man. Now, I disagree. Me and Kevin disagree uh, as far as black men on what we would consider a high value man. We disagree with that. But based off of his show, his show, not my opinion, not what my opinion is, based off of what his show was, or what a high value man was, right? Women would call up. He didn't force anybody. He didn't call anybody. They called him. Women would call up and say that they don't want an average man. They felt like they were settling for an average man. Was this all black women? No. This was the percentage of women that he was dealing with. Right? I like the fact, and it's a shame as black men, we have to always, even with Dr. Umar Johnson, we have to always make sure that we say, not all black women, because the people that get offended, we are only dealing with the sample size or that was in that ecosystem that called into a show. He didn't force them. He didn't know who they were going to be. They didn't have to call in. This is what their opinions were. Let's continue. They, they felt like they were settling. Kevin would say, do you have any children? Yeah, I have two. Well, what is the income of, your, uh, of the men that you had your children with? What was the level of the men? He said, well, then that's the level that you get. How you have these expectations on a, a, of a high-value man when you're, where, where, when you're not even to the level of what a high-value man may want? Because Kevin would ask, are you, are you what a high-value man would want? Most of these women never even considered what a man want because they're used to just a man. But they say settling, a man settling for them. And, and these were the women. So now Kevin wasn't talking to all women. So the, the hundreds of thousands of women that actually love and agree with Kevin, they knew he wasn't talking to them. Because a lot of these women were either already married in long-term relationships or they were happy. He wasn't talking to them. Kevin was exposing some the way these women disrespect some men. Mm -hmm. If you listen to the show. They would call up and just really talk down on 85% of men are average earners in America. Mm -hmm. if, if you're a black man and you're a six figure, man, you want like the 0.2%. So you want, you want access to this black man that's a six figure earner that has, that all women want. Mm -hmm. This is what Kevin would say. Mm -hmm. You want, that all women want. Mm -hmm. What what gives you, uh, uh, what quality, what, what gives you, what qualities do you have for him to say that he would want you? Mm -hmm. And this is what Kevin was explaining. So what's wrong with, Kevin was saying, what's wrong with just being with an average man? What's wrong with being with a man that makes forty to $60,000 a year and you you combine y'all income and y'all live happily ever after? Well, I feel like I'm settling for this man. This is what Kevin was talking about. He wasn't talking about nothing else. Mm -hmm. So when he asked dress, dress size, when he asked, do you work out? Can you cook? Can you clean? He was saying that a, a six-figure earner, this is the type of woman most, most of the time of what he would want. Are you able to do these things? And he wouldn't want a woman with children. So he's... Let me just kind of stop that there. Let me just say this, and, you know, this is why the Black Ministry community started to form in 2015. Because black men in America, if you want to consider African American, Black American, ADOS, FBA, what we are really been looked at the last 50 years are guys who come in and work, maybe give money, kowtow to the issues that sisters want us to do, and not have an opinion and just accept whatever that we get. Our dreams are not really our own. Our goal is to support whatever the female black community wants and we are, you know, basically below them. So our opinions and our feelings typically do not matter. So and if you go out there and you live 
uh, something that's against the narrative, like let's say, for example, you get in an interracial relationship, you have some criticism of black America, and then all of a sudden it comes back to you hate your mama, you hate yourself, you hate your race. Uh, but you know, when black women go out there and they date a white man, it's, it's, it's a girl, congratulations, and all these other things. So there's two different rules. There's one set of rules for black women in America, and there's one set of rules for black women, uh, black men in America. And that's what we've been pointing out. Let's continue. So these were his opinions, but he was hated for this. Mm -hmm. When you have women channels like Fox Soul and all kinds of other women channels that totally disrespect and berate men. But I don't see where anybody saying that they're um, separating the separate tarnish in the community. Mm -hmm. So all I'm, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying in this, all I'm saying in this video is, I watch these women disrespect other sisters. My wife watched Kevin Samuels. She agreed with most of his stuff, mm -hmm. right? She agreed with most of his stuff. And like I said, these women are pygmies. These women are mammies. These women have low self-esteem. These women, these these women are the problem. You, these women are man worshippers and all these different things. Well, my wife been married to me for eighteen years. I hold my family down. I take care of my kids, my grandkids. I take care of my wife. My wife, well, if she is a man worshiper, then guess what? I, I, I'm good. I'm good because she's loving on me. She's happy. I'm happy. She she agreed with stuff Kevin seemed to say. Let's get Most married people that I heard talk about on the anecdotal agree with what Kevin Samuel said. And that's the problem. So I'll, let, I'll leave the link to Loaded Brother George Lincoln's channel. Um, it's a really good video that he wanted to do, so I wanted to go ahead and give a, a subscriber's perspective. Um, if you guys have even more subscriber videos you guys have done, if they're good, I'll actually review them um, in memory of our brother. Um, try to put them out there in a positive light, right? So guys, I really appreciate you guys for supporting us during this time, supporting his family at this time. Thank you for all of the love um, that you've given our brother. We really, really thank you so much. Me as a um, personal friend of Kevin Samuels, I really, really appreciate all the condolences you've given to me. It's been a very, very tough time for me, not only for me, but my own personal family, right? They were worried about me and, and, and you, my mom and my dad was calling and concerned for his family. So thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys for your support. Um, let's keep it moving. Um, as you know, the before remains all time high, I'm out.